Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Welcome everyone to part three, that is today's lesson, part three of systems of equations and today is graphing. For part one was substitution, part two was elimination, and then here we have part three which is graphing. If you need either substitution or elimination specifically for your class or lesson, please go to the links in the description and you have the links to those two parts. So part three of graphing. Anyone who's just jumped here from before um, part one and part two, a system of equations is when I'm telling you two things about a pair of numbers essentially. And I'm saying these things are true. Number one plus number two is 12. 2 times number 1 plus 3 times number 2 is 27. What are my numbers? Like I've been saying, it's like you have an annoying friend who's trying to get you to solve math riddles when you'd rather just be playing video games. So that's what a system of equations is. Graphing, um, a lot of people find graphing to be the easiest of the three ways, especially, especially when you are using a graphing calculator. I'm going to show you just a little bit, I'm going to, I probably should have written that smaller. Oh, well, let's, let's write this a little smaller just so it's, you know, a little easier. So we have X plus Y equals 12, two X plus three Y equals 27. Now, if I did not have a graphing calculator and I was wanting to graph this, first thing I would want to do is get these into a form that makes them very easy to graph. Now for me, that is the Y intercept form or Y equals MX plus B. So I'm going to change both of these into that form. I actually have a, if you're not familiar with the Y equals MX plus B form, I do have a video on that as well. And I have a link to that below. All right. So I need to solve for Y to do so. So I'm going to this one, I'm going to subtract X from both sides. And we get y equals negative x plus 12. So there's my first line. My second one, 2x plus 3y. I want to change colors here to differentiate. 2x plus 3y equals 27. Again, I want y to be by itself. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. 3y equals 27 minus 2x. I'm going to continue this up here. And I'm going to rewrite that as saying 3y equals negative 2x plus 27. I'm going to divide both sides, everything in it, by 3. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 9. Okay, I went through that kind of quickly, but just wanting to get our two lines. So I'm going to write these up here. So now I have y equals negative x plus 12 and I have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 9. Okay, so I'm going to erase this down here. Kind of clean this up a bit. And I'm going to scoot this over so all I'm looking at is this. Okay. So, and I'm actually going to scoot this down and I'm going to extend, didn't mean to do that little red mark. I'm going to extend my chart up a bit. Okay. Extend it up. Okay. All right. So I'm using the graph that's in the background. You can see that in like in my graph paper. And I'm just using it straight one for one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, two, three, four. I'm gonna make a little note, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, did I, oh, for Pete's sake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Okay, I'm making this on a Monday. I'm still in weekend mode. What can I say? Alright. <laughs> in my defense, these lines are really hard to see on my screen. They show up better after the video's been made. <laughs> Alright, so to graph a line, what do we start with? We have our first line, y equals negative x plus 12. Start with our y-intercept there, which is 12. So I'm going to make a little dot for the y-intercept of 12. And then, make that really sort of as precise as I can, okay? And my little red dot for 12. And then a negative x, negative 1 slope, means I go, I rise negatively. <laughs> so negative 1, 1. Doot, doot. That means go down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, etc. So I'm going to take my ruler, and that's going to be, there we go, a lovely little 45 degree angle. And I'm going to, come on, drop that line there. So that's my first line, y equals negative x plus 12. I tried to get that as dead on as I could on those lines, on the actual grid mark itself and not my inaccurate dots. Our next one, negative two-thirds x plus nine, okay? So this one I'm going to do in blue. There's my plus nine. Now negative two-thirds x means I go down two and to the right three, down two to the right three, down two to the right three, okay? And I'm going to take, and precision is, is key here. If I can be as precise as is humanly possible trying to line up, you know, and if this is, this is a lot, frankly, this is a lot easier if it's on um, actual graph paper. Okay. So it didn't come out exactly perfect. Let me try it. Let me try it one more time. Let me see if I can get it a little better. So down to, okay. All right. Let me see if I can try it one more time. I'm just, it's not the best. I'm, I'm really not the greatest trying to get this lined up, but I want, I want you to be able to see this as clearly as I can, I can make it. I may have done it better the first time, but anyway, <laughs> there's the idea. If you have a real ruler that you're not trying to move around with fingers on a touchpad, on a touch screen, you can really see it. So the solution to this is, as you probably guessed, where the lines cross, where they intersect, that's my solution. Now, if I'm looking at this on a, a graph paper, let's see, I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's my little, my point of intersection. It looks like where x equals nine and y equals three. Nine, three, nine, three. Let me check my original equation. Let's bring that over here. Nine and three. If you saw the first two <laughs> videos, you know it's the right answer, but we're going to pretend we didn't, we didn't do that. And we're going to check it out. We're going to plug those in. Nine plus three equals 12. Yes. Two times nine plus three times three equals 27. Two times nine is 18. Three times three is nine. 18 plus nine equals 27. Yes, we have an answer. Okay, now if you have a graphing calculator, that can be very helpful. All right, so I'm going to switch over to, uh, the easiest one to show you is desmos.com. I'm gonna put a link to that below as well. It's an online graphing calculator. It does a great job. If you have a graphing calculator on your phone or also just have like one of the Texas Instruments TI a series of graphing calculators is a very common one. So we're going to jump over now to the uh, Desmos graphing calculator and we're going to look at it there. Okay, so here's the uh, desmos.com slash calculator and I'm going to type in just very straight what my two equations are, x plus y equals 12, enter. And then our second equation was 2x plus 3y equals 27. Enter. Double check that I typed them in correctly. Okay. Now I can't see it, but let's zoom out. I'm just using my little scroll wheel and click and drag to get it to move. 
and there are my two lines. If you're not familiar with Desmos over here on the left, you can see like to the left of this equation, you see it has that green, the squiggle line, and look over here, that is the green line. I hear the blue one, and there's a blue line. I can turn them on and off by clicking those. Okay. Now they've highlighted the point of intersection. They've also highlighted the intercepts, which is really nice. You see that? For because I've selected the blue line, and you have the X and Y intercepts there. There's our X, and there's our Y, and they also have the point of intersection with the other line, nine three. It's very straightforward, and that is our answer. And I can hear some of you <laughs> saying, why didn't I do this to begin with? It's so easy. Yes, it is. There's a couple of reasons why you don't learn to do this first. One, sometimes math is not about doing it the easy way. You know, we can just type everything into a calculator and have the answer spit out to us, but it's still good to learn how to add and subtract and multiply and divide. It's my little soapbox for a minute, but it's not just about the ability to do it. It's the exercise it gives your brain in learning how to solve logical equations, logical problems. That is a very useful skill to be able to logically think things through and deduce. And besides, this calculator, do you think it invented itself? No. Someone who was really smart and really understood math invented it. And wouldn't you like to be the person who's out there inventing and doing awesome things and creating cool things that everyone uses? So they're paying you <laughs> and you're not having to pay other people? Just saying. I'm just saying. Don't you want to be the one programming and making all the cool stuff that everybody else wants? Just throwing that out there. So yes, this is a, a simpler way. If you're using substitution and elimination in a class and that's the assignment, this is a nice way to, after you've done substitution or elimination, check your work and make sure you did it correctly. And if you see the lines intersecting at a different spot than your answer, you probably did something wrong. You probably did. So go back and check it. Another thing is, Sometimes where lines intersect, it's not this nice round number. You might get something that's a, a long string, like an irrational number. You're like, uh, what does that even mean? What is that supposed to be? And that, that's not going to help you. Like you might get, say, 0 0.14285. You're like, I don't know what that is. But if you did substitution or elimination, you go, oh, it's one seventh. One seventh. Okay, done. All right, so that's why. Okay, so I'm going to jump back over to the whiteboard now. Okay, so yeah, like I was like I was just saying, so here we are back on the whiteboard. This might not have been so straightforward. I might have drawn these two lines and it may have intersected say like like right there. And if you zoom in, you go, "Oh, what is that? What is what is that point? I don't care how precisely you draw your lines, you're not going to know what that is. This is a pretty clear intersection. You go, okay, it intersects at nine three. And like I can test that, but if you get something that's out here in the middle of a square, mm, you don't know. And same thing even with as I was saying with the graphing calculator, where it's a very precise and it'll give you this long string of decimals. It may not be something you know. If you do the math, you might find find out it's like 1350 seconds. And you're never going to guess that looking at a decimal, that that decimal is 1350 seconds. So yes, this is a very simple way for these whole number or integer solutions. But there's a reason why we do the others and why they're also very useful. Usually in the real world, you're not going to have the very simple 9, 3, solution. Okay, so that was systems of equations. Again, part one was substitution. Part two was elimination. Part three here is graphing. I uh, hope it was helpful. If it was, please be sure to like and share. And if you'd like to see more videos like this about different, I'm going through, going to be going through algebra, geometry, trigonometry, calculus, going through all of them in ways that are hopefully easy to understand 
And as I said, I try to give some real world analogies and make sure all the concepts are covered so you really understand it and are not just memorizing things. If you like that kind of thing, please subscribe. Much appreciated. And hope you have a great and awesome day. Bye.